this video is on interchanging clock heights. So a lot of times we will see a question wherein we will get something like this. So if you read the question carefully, it says that on a particular day, Frodo wanted to go out and play with his friends. His uncle Bilbo wanted him to not be out for more than three hours. And so told Frodo that he could leave any time between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. But he would have to come back sometime between 5 p.m. and 6 p.m. To make matters more complex, Frodo was allowed to be out for the same amount of time that it took the hour hand and the minute hand of the clock to interchange their positions. For how much time was Frodo out? Now, the question looks extremely complicated simply because it has very limited information that has been made available to you. So they have just said that the hour hand will be between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. and the minute hand will be between 5 p.m. and 6 p.m. to start with and then they will interchange their positions. And we have to figure out for how much time was Frodo out. Now you can pause this video at this point in time and try it out on your own or you can simply go through the solution that I will be telling you and you can probably solve any question which appears in this point. So we will now move on to the data that has been given to you. So first of all, we have to understand the question in its entirety. Now the question has four aspects to it that we will be seeing. The first thing is the minute hand would have been between five and six when he left and between two and three when he came back. So we are talking simply about the hour hand that has been given to us. But in essence, it also states that the minute hand would have also interchanged its positions with the hour hand. And so to begin with, the minute hand would have been between five and six. But when he came back, it would have been between two and three. So essentially what is happening here is two hours and so many minutes, three hours and so many minutes, four hours and so many minutes. And it will be short of five hours and that many minutes. We will have a look at it in the next slide as to what the significance of this gap is. But for now, we can simply say that the minute hand is essentially between five and six to begin with and between two and three when he came. Also, the time taken by the hour hand and the minute hand to cover the respective distances is the same. In essence, what this means is the hour hand would be traveling for let's say some amount of time t. The minute hand would not have stopped at a particular moment. right? It would have been in motion throughout. So we can say that the amount of time for which the hour hand was in motion is the same as the amount of time for which the minute hand was in motion as well. The third thing that we have to look at is because of this time taken being the same, we can say that the speed of the hour hand and the minute hand will be directly proportional to the distance traveled by each one of them at an individual limit. Finally, the most important bit of information in any clocks question is that the speed of the hour hand is half degree per minute and that of the minute hand is six degrees per minute. In essence, both of them are moving in the same direction. And so we can say that in every minute, the minute hand will gain five and a half degrees over the hour hand. Or in other words, the relative speed of the minute hand and the hour hand will be 5.5 degrees per minute. Now with this information, we will simply go and we will figure out what exactly we can form and then we will probably come up with a solution. So to start with, we have to assume a variable. Now let the minute hand be x minutes past 2 when he left home. So we are simply concerned about the amount of time that had passed after 2 o'clock when he left home. Now using that, we will be able to figure out for as in what was the starting time and what was the end time and then we will be able to figure out the difference. Now if you look at it, when it was 2 p.m., the angle formed by the minute hand and the hour hand would have been 60 degrees. So because there are two digits, right? 12 to 1, 1 to 2, there are these two gaps. And so we can say that the angle formed by the minute hand and the hour hand at 2 p.m. would have been 60 degrees. Now because of the motion that has been happening, this minute hand will cross the hour hand and then it will go a bit further and it will end up somewhere between 5 and 6 as we saw in the first bit of information. So x minutes past 2 would mean that the distance between the hour hand and the minute hand would be nothing but 5.5x that has been traveled by the minute hand over the hour hand at relative speed minus the 60 degrees of advantage that the hour hand had to start with. So the hour hand was already in front of the minute hand. So the minute hand had to cross this hour hand and then it had to go a bit further. And that is why the distance between the hour hand and the minute hand would be nothing but 5.5x minus 60 degrees. Now if you look at the next part, as I said before as well, 
the minute hand would have completed three rounds. So if it would have ended at the same position as it was up between two and three p.m. to start with, it would have been at the same position x minutes past five as well. So as in whenever it was between, uh, whenever um, it would have been at the same point in time, um, it would have been, it would have completed three rounds. Uh, we can say. but because it is taking the place of the r hand it would be between 2 and 3 and not between 5 and 6 and so it will be some distance short of covering these three rounds now what is this distance now the distance is nothing but the distance between the hour hand and the minute hand when the motion started in other words if it started x minutes past 2 then as we saw 5.5x minus 60 degrees was the distance between the hour hand and the minute hand so it would be short of completing three rounds by that same amount and so we will say that the distance that has been covered by the minute hand would be nothing but 1080 which is 360 into 3 minus 5.5x minus 60 degrees so 5.5x minus 60 will be in the bracket similarly if you look at it the hour hand would have simply covered the same amount of distance that was present between the hour hand and the minute hand because it has to take the position of the minute hand at the end of the journey or at the end of the time period so the distance covered by the hour hand would be nothing but 5.5x minus 60 degrees which was the distance between the hour hand and the minute hand. now it becomes very easy because we know the speed of the minute hand we know the speed of the hour hand we know the distance covered by the minute hand and the distance covered by the hour hand in terms of one variable which is x and so using one equation one variable you should be able to figure it out now if you look at it the ratio of the speeds of the hour hand and the minute hand is 1 is to 12 because we saw it in the first slide as well that um, the hour hand will cover uh, will move at a speed of one uh, of half degrees per minute whereas the minute hand will move at a speed of 6 degrees per minute and so the effective speed is nothing but 5.5 degrees as we saw and also the ratio of the speeds stand alone would be half is to 6 or 1 is to 12 so we can equate the speeds to the relate uh, to the relative distances that we had seen and so we will be able to get the answer so 1 by 12 equals 5.5x minus 60 divided by 1080 minus 5.5x plus 60 as we had seen there on simplification you will get x equals 3720 by 143 minutes past now if you look at it carefully it is somewhere between uh, 25 to 30 i think so it's between 5 and 6 as we had intended it to be so x is 3720 by 143 minutes past now is x our answer of course not because we have been looking at minutes past 12 here but we want to find out the distance that has been traveled now as the options are all in terms of hours what we have to do is we have to simply understand as to what exactly happened in terms of hours and the best reference point here would be the hour hand and so what we will do is we will simply substitute this thing back into the distance that has been covered by the hour hand so we know that distance covered by the hour hand was 5.5x minus 60 and so it will be nothing but 5.5 into 3720 by 143 minus 60 on simplification you will get that the distance that has been traveled by the hour hand was 1080 by 13 degrees now the speed of the hour hand is half degrees per minute and so we know that the time that has been taken or the time for which the hour hand has been in motion is 2160 by 13 minutes or 36 by 13 hours if you divide it by 60 which will be 2 hours and 10 by 13 minutes and so option b is correct for more such quality content do subscribe to our youtube channel learning groups thank you